What's going on everybody? It's your boy Spencer and today I thought I'd take a little bit of a unique video and just kind of briefly go over all of the uh, different Egyptian god decks that I've done and I think naturally it's just going to come up over time like which one of these is the best and I think there is an objective answer to me but I'll go over some replays with you guys and we can just check them out. Some of them are just showcasing like kind of the cool stuff I can do and I'll tell you my experiences playing it. We'll start out with the pure Egyptian god build here. Uh, this guy's doing 10 yeast stuff. This is definitely a going second deck, which is probably one of the biggest disadvantages. I mean, I know you have Thunder Force attack and all these other quick play spell cards, uh, which is nice, which definitely helps it. But when you have cards like the Winged Dragon of Ra and it's kind of your only option to summon, you don't want to do that in the first turn. Everybody, I, I mean, everybody does play Ash Blossom. It's just so funny. I seem to face it so much. But uh, the important thing is when you're stacking the deck a lot too. And I, this was Pot of Disparity, so it didn't stack the deck necessarily. Kind of shuffled itself back, but um, you have to make sure that you know not only the card that's coming next in case the Ash Blossom comes, but the card after that and the card after that. You just never know what's going to happen. You'd like to shuffle the deck every once in a while if you don't like what you're going to come next, but you got to remember because people have weird disruption options and something you don't really think about. Like, I don't really think about the true name being Ash Blossom, so it's it's a, it's an easy skill, but it's definitely a skill that takes a little bit to learn. So cool that uh, this is not once per turn, by the way. So every single turn, if you can stack the deck, you can just grab the next card. Such a good engine piece. I really recommend it. Oh, and uh, I will be doing the deck profile for this because I do feel like it's decent enough for sure. And yeah, uh, you did just miss it. He did get rid of the Cypher, but I was able to get Thunder Force attack off and didn't use Pot of Disparity, so I was able to use that draw effect, which is awesome. And after he gets rid of the Cypher, I'm still able to summon another Egyptian God, which is which is Cherry, to say the least. You can stack the deck once again, and again on the next turn. It's cool to grab something like Fist of Fate. I mean, that's the reason you stack the deck a lot. So you, it's easier for you to get access to these cards because there is no searcher. And um, really, what I would just love to see, man, is if Dark Magical Circle could just get replaced, you know, with essentially a mobilizing gauge version <laughs> of this archetype, this deck would probably be the best. It's just not... Ranking it, this is probably the second best version of the Egyptian God deck, which is really cool because, I, like I said, I didn't like it that much before. Or I just didn't believe in it. And to the most part, I mean, it can be pretty darn gimmicky still, so. So the cool thing about Re Reactor Slime is actually a much better card than I've ever gotten a credit for. Really, what you should be able to do is if your opponent, at least if your opponent owns more monsters than you special summon itself to use this effect, it sucks you have to always normal summon it. But what's great is that you don't have to run multiple copies of Metal Reflex Slime. Because if it goes to the graveyard, you can just bring it back with the next copy of Reactor Slime. Uh, even Monster Reborn, you bring back Reactor Slime, you'll be able to get Metal Reflex Slime. And as silly as it sounds, uh, this does put in a lot of work. There's not It's not like people can negate this effect. Having a 3,000 defense body is pretty decent. Uh, he's going to go into Tornado Dragon and start popping this, but like I said, as long as I can get Reactor Slime back on the field, uh, this will also follow suit. I think I ripped, yeah, I rip off the Monster Reborn, which is crazy. I'm going to summon these tokens. I think I have an Exchanging Souls, which is nice. Of course, I'm going to use his monsters. And the great thing is, right there you go, you saw I reset it, so... Next turn, I'll be able to go into my Egyptian God Slime, which is really awesome. And this is the reason Slifer is my favorite Egyptian God. I love the original artwork too, but the, the, Slifer definitely has the better uh, alt art. I think I, just, I think I talked about that very recently. Uh, he rips nothing off the top. Boom Shakalaka. Unfortunately, I don't get the effect, you know, the same as like the uh, Guardian Slime or anything like that. Uh, and he ended up just surrendering, didn't have anything, because he can't summon anything, because it's going to get popped. And once he gets up to 3 zone attack, like, nothing's getting over Slifer. They have to, like, get rid of it on the field before they ever, uh, you know, use anything from their hand or something like that. Uh, this is Cyframes, and there is a, there's two, like, super unique interactions for this, because I, I know Cyframes isn't necessarily the most exciting matchup in the world. 
the thing I don't understand about psi frames is like I don't think they just have a win condition. It's just it's just disruption, which is, and it's not like you can really splash this archetype. That'd probably be a project for another time to see if I could get this to work with something else. Because standing alone, I mean, that's great. He he's banishing cards from my hand from the field, uh, negating my spell effects and stuff like that. Uh, but he, he just doesn't have a way to assemble damage on the field. I guess the one called by, that's pretty hilarious. But that's okay. I mean, it's a 50-50 chance. I mean, this is Metaverse, so he could have, uh, you know, like a, a Mystic Mine or something. But you got to take that kind of leap of faith, uh, so to speak, uh, when you're playing this deck. It's not something you can be conservative with. Uh, that wasn't the weird interaction. I think it's in this duel, excuse me. There's a weird thing with timing that I'm trying to look out for, so it's probably this one. I tried using Magical Musketeers once, man. I just, I didn't like it. The, the one advantage I will say, because I know this is obviously going to have to be replaced by some sort of a sport at some time, but I guess the cool thing about it for now is people think you're playing dark magicians when you play this first that's why i didn't i have i technically had other cards in my hand i could have played at the time of course he has the last card is ash blossom uh but uh i didn't because in his mind i'm still playing dark magician so he's not going to plan around these kinds of cards like guardian slime or anything like that so it's kind of one of those things you pick up playing Yu-Gi-Oh a long time the less information your opponent has about you the better and i think i did mention this earlier but yeah I, be sure to get that skill where you know, like, the next card, or the next card, or the next card. I'm gonna just pop all of his monsters. And here, look at this. I missed timing with the Winged Dragon of Ra's effect. But I do have awesome rank 10s in the deck. Uh, number 35 is so cool. Uh, it, all the cards, like, gain attack, dude. Like, it's an 8,000 attack obelisk. Like, who would have ever thought to see the day where you see something like that? How awesome. I think that's so cool, man. That's, this is one of the... I think this is the most fun deck. It's just not the best one. This is a deck I would 100% take to locals and have the time of my life going, like, X3 out of five rounds. This is a pretty awkward out for a lot of decks. Uh, so we'll see how I can deal with it. I mean, really, the poster child answer is going to be Thunder Force Attack. So we'll see if I can make that happen. Trying my best to stack, and I didn't like anything that was off the top, so I, I grabbed the card advance, and I did have the Archfiend's Oath in my hand, uh, which is nice, and because the true name was in there, I can stack and then stack again. <laughs> and he, the prophecy has come true, right? Uh, this is going to get popped to the end phase, but that's okay. This is the craziest duel I think I've ever played with a deck, man. I am, like, so far now on this one. Like, it feels like there's no chance. Look at this advantage. He's got the Harpy Feathers Duster. He's got the Nibiru. Has the Harpy's Feather Storm. There's no way I win this, right? Guardian Slime's a good card. So maybe I can give myself a chance and survive. I don't even think it's going to be able to stay on the field because he's going to have so many monsters. Let's see if I can pull this off. I'm coming down to the end here. I think he uh, messes up the order of his attacks, which gives me a chance to survive. Uh, I, I do this because I, I know I can at least have a monster reborn, perhaps. So he goes for the Harpy's Feather Storm. I can't activate monster effects, but that's okay. There's no monster effects in the deck. Still, this is not high enough. He's probably going to go into the battle phase, which he does. But I do have another Guardian Slime, which I ripped off the top. Slowly but surely, he still has another Harpy's Feather Storm, which is really bad for me. I'm never going to summon more than multiple times, so it's really good to be able to play around that. And this is just absolutely crazy. Still no monster effects, but that's okay. Because I can overlay into number 35 once again. And now suddenly, look at me, I kind of have the advantage in this duel. The guy who like went plus three... I uh, have all this defense. Fortunately for me, the life points just worked out where he had more. He gains all of his... I think he's going to activate a third Harpy's Feather Storm. But I do have... I have that. Uh, all the monsters are gaining attack. And I could bounce this too. Like when they when he tries to activate something. So 
I sometimes it's easy to forget how good of a card Monster Reborn is, uh, even in today's game. I used to think it could come off of the ban list uh, with like no problem at all, uh, but I think I think I'm wrong about that. Uh, this is a mirror match, so I don't run cards like uh, the Winged Dragon of Ra and Mortal Phoenix. Maybe I will. Maybe I'll drop the count of like one of my Egyptian gods or something. I don't know. It just never seems really worth it at all. It seems like it feels like a brick, but who knows? The thing that's hard is you basically your only way to send it to the graveyards with Millennium Revelation, and like how often can you do that? Probably not a ton. Uh, but I, I totally just, yeah, dominated this guy, so. Not, uh, not bad for sure. This is the last pure Egyptian god, uh, duel I'll show you. So, I mean, I've shown a lot of div diverse things. I've shown you this deck against some control, a few combo, a lot of disruption. It doesn't do anything particularly well, so it's kind of hard for your opponent to understand like what they should be negating and stuff like that. So that's always the best part. And floodgates, for the most part, just don't matter because the deck is so simple. I mean, you can see it here. You can have all the barrier statues that you want. I mean, some of the some barrier statues, man, just end it. Like, I don't even know if I could activate it, but I guess if someone was playing Zexel. And they're playing like my Raid Raptor deck. Exchanging Souls would be an out <clears throat> because if they if you activate the effects of it during uh, the standby phase or like the draw phase, you can if they chain that you can chain Exchanging Souls, so it'll go in opposite direction of uh, like what cards are used first. So that would be pretty cool. I mean, that's one of the very few outs I can even think of for that kind of board. Uh, so that was pure. So I'm going to go ahead and like rank that definitely second. This is last, but it's it's so interesting and fun, and it's so close to being something good. Just without that extra deck, it makes it hard to tribute summon for the Egyptian gods. Here, it's like the poster child perfect part. Like, oh, it works out. I have, uh, you know, card advance and Ra's disciple. I decide to go for Slifer here. I know I'm, I'm messing myself up from targeting, but... Uh, yeah, this is like straight up Dragon Link. So this is the ceiling of the deck. All of his cards, it's it. Dragon Link, unless they have the out in their hand, it's not It's not going to come from monsters because all of these are just going to get popped all the time. Uh, I should have saved Thunder Force. I didn't... Reading is hard. I, see, I saw that he had 2,000 attack. It's a huge waste. Uh, so he's going to try to mount this wall of defense. And this is like for sure the worst part about the deck. Uh, in that... You're just not... The attack barrier is a big problem. Like, you're going to be able to con control duels, but your opponent's just going to be able to draw and draw and draw uh, forever, basically. Uh, he goes into Red Eyes Darkness Metal, and without being able to access Egyptian God Slime, like, I don't really know what else to use other than Reactor Slime that's going to give you a chance to tribute summon in one turn with, like, Card Advance or Ancient Chant. So it's kind of just stuck there. And like I was saying, you know, Metal Reflex Slime is a decent defense. It's not like you can go into Striker Dragon or Romulus, uh, so it's all pretty useless. Finally, I can rip something off the top to help me kind of maintain that advantage. And hopefully I can grab an Exchanging Souls, that would probably be best. Uh, I'm not sure if it was off the top, but still, he ended up surrendering. I mean, there's nothing you can do. I don't even know if he has an out in his deck. Uh, th this is, yeah, so, I mean, I, I took out, that's with Slifer, but it's so hard to maintain card advantage when you're using Slifer the Sky Dragon, so what I end up doing, like I showed you before, is you basically just make this a Turbo Obelisk Monarch, just, and it also has the natural, uh, you know, ability for, like, not targeting, it's 4,000 attack, you know, it doesn't really matter, it doesn't matter how many cards you have in your hand. So this is a good opening for the, like everything I need to succeed is, is here. So hopefully he doesn't have enough negates or interaction and stuff. It stinks to rip that off the top. I mean, I really could have used any other card. This is my least favorite obelisk art. I think it's kind of garbage. Uh, I think he's going to pop the dark magical circle, but that certainly does not matter at all. You can negate obelisk all you want. It's still 4,000 attack. 
And I did get the Ancient Chant, so I can Tribute Summon in addition to my normal summon. That's it. Fairly simple, right? Didn't even use the uh, Monarch stuff in that duel. And uh, so yeah, that's last. And for sure, I mean, I had to like re-imagine uh, or like go back into it. And like, is this really a good deck? This invoked Shadal, Winged Dragon of Raw. It's for sure, man. It's there's no competition. There's room for hand traps. We all know how good the invoked engine is. Again, a lot of it depends on if your opponent goes into the extra deck. So I mean, that's kind of the unfortunate part of all of it. But if they do, I really, I don't want to say straight up. Oh, it's better to have the Winged Dragon of Raw. It sounds so. Not arrogant, but I don't know. It's just sound. It feels goofy a little bit to say that, because it's like not proven at all or anything. But it's a different way to play it for sure. To have the Wing Dragon of Raw, it just your opponent a lot of the times just cannot prepare themselves for it, because they'll think they have. They think they'll have stopped you when they stopped your invoking in your Shadal stuff. And I, I'll show. There's a few examples of this for sure that I'll be able to show you. Macabre is just so good. That's really, <laughs> I know it's technically an Indigenous God deck. It's not really. Uh, it's more of an Invoke Shit All deck. But uh, I mean, that's what makes this deck so awesome. I mean, t and the cool thing is, is you really can go first a lot of the times because of Makaba. Because if if you do a Makaba and you have a Guardian Slime in your hand, I mean, it's it's only one form of interaction, sure. But you also have that defense behind you with that search that's coming afterwards, being able to go to the Egyptian God Slime, being able to trigger this. I think this is legitimately the only card in the game that lets you trigger uh, Guardian Slime during your turn. That I mean, that's a lot of where the power comes in. Being able to splash in Rainbow Neos, that's just a bonus to just be able to completely dominate this duel. And yes, for the flex. The 12,000 attack, I wish I had more life points. That would have been like a massive amount. A huge number, but it's still way more than you could ever ask for for lethal. That might not... See, that's the thing. It might not have been it for the Invoked Engine or the Shadal Engine, but here you can end the duel very quickly. And if you have, happen to have Hyper Blaze or you, you're able to search it, um, that guarantees your victory. So um, this is Invoked Dogmatica which is very much a relevant meta type of deck. And that's really, like, when you're playing cards like this, like against Invokes, uh, or Dogmatica, excuse me, and, you, and you're used to using your extra deck, that's, that can be really hard to play through. And this is the new Ritual Monster. It's another reason why I'm showing this duel. When your opponent activates a monster effect, basically you can chuck a card to the, uh, the graveyard, which is what he's going to do. Honestly, I thought he should have summoned Entity. Uh, being able to uh, get that uh, Guardian Slime to the Graveyard, because I need to make sure nothing funky goes on. Especially if this is Punishment, it wasn't. Should have been. But still, it wouldn't have mattered if he had if he had waited all that time. And he probably was. Who, who would it possibly expect the Winged Dragon of Ra to hit the field and just OTK you multiple times? So, like I did, like I talked about, there are like different engines within the deck. Uh, but still, like your win condition is always going to be there, and you're going to try to use it a lot because that's it's just a good way. No one is really wants to face it. Uh, Ash Blossom is always just a good card to have. So, I hate you hate to uh, be Ash Blossom, but you love to Ash Blossom people, right? And look at this. I have three Alistairs in my hand. It's not a brick, man. Look at this. I'm going to be able to just end the game. It's like a pseudo Wing Dragon of Raw. And it inflicts piercing battle damage. Good, good game, dude. How fun is that? I love Invoke Purgatrio. Such a good card. Last duel is against Fluffles. And with this, I'll kind of give my closing thoughts, so... All of these are extremely fun. This deck profile for the Invoked one's already out. Uh, I think I rebuilt it, but it's like 99% the same. Uh, so I don't even think I'll have to update one on that. Monarchs, I still, I just don't want to give it out, man. It's just not that good. 
Uh, I would if I get it somewhere a little closer to where I want it to be, I'll for sure do it. Uh, but be on the lookout for the um, the the deck profile for the pure Egyptian gods very soon. Uh, I'm going to be playing a lot of different games, so I, I just downloaded a ton of games on my on my actual PC, so I can play. Uh, these like high-end games, I, I say Fallout 4 is high-end, but I've never had a computer that's had a chance to play it. So uh, I'm definitely going to be doing that. Uh, but thank you so much for you guys for watching today. Another kind of long video, but another fun one just to go through a bunch of duels and hang out. Uh, so let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And that, have an absolutely wonderful night.